Hello everyone, this is going to be a bit of a different topic to the usual art stuff I make, but it's a tangent theme, at least for me, and at the moment, I feel it's a very important thing that many people only have kind of like surface level information about, and that partly includes me of course, since I'm sure there are many others who are much more qualified for this than I am. The hot topic I'm talking about is the growing disconnect between companies and consumers primarily, but obviously not exclusively, in the games and entertainment industry. If you would ask about a hundred people that consider themselves to be playing video games frequently, a good amount of them would tell you that the gaming industry fell off in recent years. Which is something I could feel as well, but it's completely wrong. The gaming industry is bigger than any other, and we live in a golden age of video games. And unfortunately, this golden age is also plagued by some problems that I'm very sure wouldn't be here or at least not as big as they are now if more people would be well educated on them. Consumers and companies, of course. Now, to preface this entire thing, I am in a very privileged position where I can see both sides. As in, I talk day after day with some people from various disciplines within the entertainment and especially gaming industry. And at the same time, I am a gamer. And with that perspective, I would categorize these problems that we are facing at the moment into three general sets of challenges that just need to be overcome somehow. These three sets, which I'll go over one by one, are corporate greed, affecting product quality, consumers and the developers. The second one is unnecessary proselytizing narratives in entertainment media. And the third, the general oversimplification of video games and narratives in all kinds of media, which is something that loops back into the first set of problems. Also know that these are surely not all problems that are out there, and each and every one of my main points is an amalgamation of various different problems and challenges that all feed and leech off each other. So if you have more insight on a specific thing, or even the entire thing, then write it out in a way everyone can understand, and I'll be sure to pin the comment. Now, let's start with the corporate greed and how it negatively affects the gaming industry. First of all, we need to understand why this issue is arising. Like, why wasn't it a problem 10 years ago? And to do that, here is the best kind of visualization I can make with my poor editing skills. Game devs 10 years ago would hire people to come aboard and help make the vision of some random guy that had a weird dream come true. And at the end of it, they did a good job. And our random guy's dream was also kind of interesting. They would make bank. They did what they liked and created something out of their passion that could finance them so they can do it all over again releasing the next cool title into the world. Sure, there were ups and downs, and in reality, this is all a lot more complicated. But for the sake of simplicity, we will call our little thought experiment done, or practically done. Because this is how it was 10 years ago, and the only thing we need to change to make it like it is today, is to add something in front of the game dev. You guessed it, a big boy company. Let's call our imaginary company Suoni. It's a big corporation, that bought the game dev studio a while ago and finances them. But since they have about a thousand other little companies they run, they have to streamline the process of giving orders. And they just give out the same orders to all the companies. That includes our little game development studio. And now these people still create what they like and work on their passion. But the direction they go in is just the same direction everyone else goes in. Because every company is now owned by about five big-ass megacorps, which leech every idea off each other. Now suddenly, our studio doesn't perform well anymore. Since the video games produced by all the studios owned by big corporations are effectively the same, or in a more realistic sense, they all use the same formula, because their boss companies told them that is what's trendy or that is what worked in the past. Now unable to make a lot of money for their boss company, the game studio is less and less attractive for them and will eventually be shut down, creating a bit of a chain reaction. 
of unhappy workers and companies, unhappy customers, lower revenue from released games, which eventually causes another studio to be closed. Now, obviously, this is an oversimplified explanation of what is happening in many countries all across the world, but it's only one of the few things that create this great disconnect between companies, the customers, and the workers. Now, let's get to the unnecessary proselytizing narratives in games, series, or movies, etc. Now, whereas the first problem was kind of an only company fault, this one is a fault of both the company and the consumer, as well as it is probably the most polarizing topic, because it tackles woke culture. And yes, I said it, the bad word has been dropped, so you can go ahead and dislike the video. All right, now to the actual topic of media, especially video games in my case, constantly pushing certain beliefs, norms or worldviews onto me when I'm just trying to relax from my day and try to slay a dragon. What that means is not that I am some kind of LGBTQ hater or transphobe or whatever people will try to call the people that point that out. I am, like the majority of people, just some dude who doesn't give a single fuck about a fictional character's pronouns. Now that doesn't mean I despise a video game for including them or even having educational content about the topic in them. It means whether there is or there is not, I don't care. But what I do care about is if the game I'm playing is actually good or is actually a game at all and not a 10 hour ad for me to change my beliefs. Now, I want to say I took the example of woke culture being relentlessly pushed into the industry because it is at the moment the most known one. But there are many things included in this topic other than that. And most of them are even worse, but not as commonly known such as games suggesting the worldview of actually objectifying people. And no, I don't mean the kind where a female character is objectified by being appealing to the greatest audience, by either being stylized in her body shape or by wearing a revealing outfit. And when the same is done to a male character, it's suddenly just normal or even good for all the males. I'm talking about, of course, very niche games that are actually objectifying people, males and females alike. or video games pushing a blatant racist view onto its players. In a non-sarcastic way, of course, there are a lot of bad things out there. Many are much worse than the Vogue issue, but that is one that's just the most recent and the most known since it's happening to many big games at the same time. And this curve here that I used for visualizing the people caring about Vogueness in games could also be used in any of the other examples. Maybe it'll be a bit flatter but generally speaking, that is how the majority works. So for all those that take offense when people complain about Dragon Age the Veilguard being a shitty game, they don't complain about trans people being bad. Or at least most of them are not. They are complaining about having spent 60 bucks for an interactive sex ad class, when all they wanted was to fuck up some demons. And for corporations, just a reminder that all the internet drama about how people absolutely need inclusivity or other patronizing narratives is only the 1% of either side clashing in some random comment section, while the rest of us just doesn't care enough to really address it. And the recent backlash from the greater amount of consumers is because they are getting fed up from the two loudest camps trying to convert you into their extreme beliefs. Now, for the final part, the general oversimplification of media. This is a causation of the first set of problems we have. Obviously, it's not the only cause for this, but it is one of them. Games have no diversity, and I don't mean gender diversity. I mean every game feels the same, because guess what? It is. Once a good formula has been found, every big corporation game company wants to milk it as much as they can. And with the continuing decline, unhappiness, and general bad state of most gaming studios owned by big corporations, they can't do much more than that. They often don't have the luxury of coming up with cool new ideas, IPs or mechanics, because the deadlines they get from their bosses are too tight. Why is it that the most creative and the most in-depth games are from smaller studios or indie game devs? It's because games need time. They cost a lot to make and they are a big risk to take. And of course, from an economic standpoint, I can understand every single corpo that doesn't understand the gaming industry telling his studio guys to just make another Assassin's Creed just like the last one. But I also know from the game dev perspective that the more time and freedom people have, 
the less risk you generally take in making something completely new. Because 99% of game devs, artists, programmers, modelers, and so on are gamers, and they know what they want, which they don't get to do under the control of some corpo guy telling them what they want. But of course, that is not the only factor going into this general oversimplification in games. Another factor which also chimes in with the corporate greed is the entry barrier for new games. And this kind of started, I would say, in about 2016 to 2018, when it really became apparent that some games like League of Legends or Path of Exile will never get new players, because the barrier to enter was just too damn high. Now I haven't played PoE 1. However, I had the misfortune of playing League of Legends, and just to be able to play this game decently without actually being skilled at it whatsoever, you would need to know over 200 different items and about 140 characters, each incredibly diverse, with everything and everyone doing something completely different. And to all of that, you would need to know the mechanics and nuances of the game itself, which led then to many companies fearing less sales because people wouldn't be able to enter the game, which is a fair point, but in recent years this became ridiculous. Of course, there are busy people playing video games that need a little refresher every now and then, but why not make your game actually good and memorable, instead of having Paimon cite the constitution of Teywet every time I pick up a flower. Now obviously I could go on and on about each topic I monologued about, but as said, I'm also not the gaming problems expert of the world, and I would feel uncomfortable blatantly telling you about stuff I have absolutely no clue about. I told you my perspective of the topics, which is obviously shaped alongside with my opinions. I tried to keep it as neutral as possible and only tell you about things that I could research and had the information black or white. I sincerely hope this video could help some people out there better understand the problems that we're facing at the moment and maybe even help work against these challenges as developers and gamers together. Goodbye.